Can I have it here? Like every pillow, my G. I can't lie, man. I like, no. like your favourite one so far? Yeah, this one's my favourite stuff. That's your little babes. What are you going to call her? Um, I'm torn between Sandra and Lucy. So. Lucy, I'm please. Sandra. Sandra. Lucy, Sandra? Sandra, man. Good old Sandra, dependable. Uh, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Nah. <laughs> Hang on. Lucy's a big next wait. chick, man. She'll wait, leave wait. me for the next one. She's My mum's named Sandra, isn't it? Huh? <laughs> Um, so I heard about Plugged in London through Maze. Um, me and him were doing like an interview with someone else and I introduced myself, he told me what he does and he mentioned that he's doing like an open mic event like, and um, I was like, alright, cool, I'm going to be there. Turn up and that's how I became acquainted with Plugged In. I think uh, one thing that struck me was the energy in the room. Like, there were some good people in the room I spoke to. I met a few people at the event actually. I met Kamar and me and him went on to do um, a show together and done an interview. I met obviously you, you were in like the video and then since then me and you have been cool and I've met your whole team off the back of that. Um, I met two other people that night too but, um, but yeah I met loads of people. Plugged in the plug. Jeez. I, I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that stuff. Plug, I like that. You know what? I should be an ambassador for the team. Oh, you know, yeah, right? yeah, she's team. making up the team left, right, and centre. <laughs> yeah. Hire me, yo. Hire me. Right, we're taking application. Transparency. I think dealing with people in the industry is very hard to understand who's who. I think um, since getting to know you guys, I felt like. It feels like more of a friendship and not so much a business relationship. That's what I love the most. It doesn't always feel that business. My ambition is to be the best artist in the country. So my purpose is to actually like challenge like, people to understand more about themselves, specifically like you. So I'm really big on that self-development and emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. So. My purpose is to inspire generations, but my ambition is to be the best artist in the country. I'm neither. I'm not. I'm. I'm not the best artist in the country yet. So that motivates me. But then, beyond that, I haven't fulfilled my purpose. So I've got like a big mountain to climb. But that's what keeps me motivated. But then, on a very like human level, it's like my mum. She's like my rock in it. So she motivates me to get to. Like she motivates, she drives the ambition and the ambition drives the purpose mm -hmm. in all. It's like I don't plan to inspire anyone. If you get inspired, you get inspired, innit? But I think I'm very real myself, innit? Like I can't, I can't inspire people by playing tennis. That like man's not good at tennis. I can't, I'm not a fucking rocket scientist or nothing. Like what I do is music. So. Or well, that's one of the things that I do. So essentially, it's just natural for me to inspire people through music. But I think more so, just be an example. Like I'm, I'm almost a blueprint for what I don't have. So in a, in a in a way, I'm probably a blueprint for other people that are looking to do similar stuff to me. So I don't that like, necessarily mean to inspire or that's not at the forefront of my mind, but people do get inspired by any which way. So whether it be from the way I dress, the way I talk, or music, the way I carry myself, or the way I love my mum, or I don't know, whatever. Like, if they find something, whatever their entry point is, mm -hmm. that's how I'd want, that's what I'd want to be the segue to achieving the ultimate mm -hmm. purpose, if that makes any sense. You need to understand what like, you know, like, how, like, you, you look at someone when you're dating and then it's like, you need to be aware of your values and standards, like, from the jump, because I think if you don't know what you stand for and you're not aware of your core intrinsic values, then you're fucked, like, it's not, there's nothing you can build off off the back of that. So, um, I would say just understand, understand the package and understand how to present it 
and everything else will fall into place. But for the most part, just take yourself seriously and have fun. Like, there's not no like one size fits all sort of thing. And I haven't, I'm still a student myself. So, but they're the one thing I've learned. That's the one thing I've learned. Just kind of carry yourself in, with integrity and um, almost understand your package and understand that there is only one you. So don't get worried about that, what anyone else is doing. And everything else should just come when it comes, in. I hear that. Cheers to that. Let me drink my, let me sip my tea, you get me? Sip. Mm -hmm. Peppermint. Peppermint. <coughs> this is actually very nice. The listening party was my favourite because that was the first thing I've ever like, conceptualised and actually done. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, but I did it anyway. Yeah. Um, but I think I didn't you know what, like, like, like we were going to call it off on the day because, yeah, I promise you, because Why? big man thing, I actually thought no one would come, like, I ain't going to lie, like, I actually thought <laughs> no one, because obviously we, like, I stress the importance of having data and understanding, like, building it on, so I created, like, a system for myself where, Obviously, you guys signed up to the listener party, yes. and as soon as you sign up, I get a text telling me that you signed up, mm -hmm. and it gives me your name, email, and phone number, oh. and that gets saved into a database. So anytime I have like shows on or merch for sale, or whatever, I just contact you straight away. I don't have to find you again. So I was stressing the importance of building that system before we did anything. So I did. I spent months trying to develop that. Did that, and then. When it came around to the listening party, even though I saw names there, I still it just felt like no one would come. Mm -hmm. And then when I saw that no one, you know, when you get that no one shows up on time, and then you're mm -hmm. like, "Fuck!" And bare things happen before the event too. And um, I was thinking, man, I'm gonna have to call it off. But just to see everyone in the room, it was a real turning point for me because it was the first time I've ever played music that intimate to a crowd before. And then. While I, was, whilst I was on the stage, and then I was looking at the crowd, I was thinking, yeah, like, we've done something here. Yeah. Because I did it with my own back, that's what makes it worthwhile. So, obviously it looks glamorous when you come, but then you're not going to see, like, the setup. the setup, the fucking, the hours that you put in, the fucking unpaid rent, the <laughs> whatever, yeah. like, no one sees all that. They just see you turn up and look good and think, yeah, it looks good, innit? But, I think, I understood how much went into that. No one else did what I did in it. And I think it meant a lot to me just to see one person in. And um, I think that was, it was a moment for me when I knew that everyone was actually listening. So there's a company called Hidden Gems Live. Um, dope, dope company, Shark Lemsey and the whole gang. Uh, and we did a, we went on like an independent tour, totally funded ourselves, organised ourselves. And we hit Leicester, Coventry, Manchester, and we ended up in London. Um, I think it was the most fun I've ever had doing music. And um, that, yeah, and uh, I've never been up north before. So, you know, when oh, you look really? at that, wow. no, nah, I've never been. Never. Well, on Google Maps and that. Nah. Like, yeah, you know, <laughs> but, or oh, like right move when you're looking at houses <laughs> and that. But, like, I never actually. Mention out. Yeah, it's the first time, so um, it's, it's interesting, different there, isn't it? mad different. Wow. So um, so yeah, it was good to see someone new. Um, but yeah, it's not all glamorous, isn't it? Like I think for the first day, I slept on a sofa, and then <laughs> when we went to Leicester, can't allow. When we went to Leicester, we were living good still. We had like okay. this amazing house. Um, and yeah, we, it felt like I was on Love Island or some shit, oh or Big Brother God. or something. Like, everyone's in one house and we're all just getting along and talking. And we had like, we were like a one-stop shop of everything. We had like our own little mobile merch. We're making merch on the go. We were fucking, um, yo, it was sick. Like, it was sick. Um, I recommend everyone to venture out and do it, but. Um, you go on tour and that and you're there. Yeah, just do it yourself, innit? Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's not it's not cheap. And I think sometimes you need to take yourself out of that bubble. So in London, 
within your little ecosystem you might have a little name but go all the way out to Manchester and no one knows you mm. and you got to go up to someone and hand them a flyer and almost sell yourself mm. if you think you're up here that shit will put you right back down to earth in a weird way through doing that you learn so much about yourself it's almost like you never I never thought about having to like sell myself as an artist until I had to actually sell myself as an artist mm -hmm. or I had to figure out ways other than music as to why people would like me or whatever but um, actually going out and talking to people was um, interesting but I think the highlight of the tour for me was in Manchester when um, three girls came to, to so I was backstage and um, someone came to let me know that there was someone waiting for me outside and um, I was like what are you talking about, man? Yo, I sat there for time thinking, you're chatting shit, man, shut up. And um, long story short, I went outside to go meet them and they were all wearing my merch. Oh. And literally, like, man was like rooted to the floor because I was thinking, have they, like, do, do they think I'm Bugsy Malone or some shit? Like, <laughs> like I'm this little old me from the ends. Like, I was thinking, what the fuck? And um, it was amazing to see because they're looking at me almost as if I'm gone and I'm like I was just sleeping on a sofa yesterday so to understand how people perceive you it blew my fucking mind so I told them to come backstage and I was just talking to them and it was almost as if like me they were like oh bro, like oh my gosh I like, no. I was like, <laughs> I'm I'm stage. Stage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was a moment but then when I started performing and they knew like they were finishing off bars and that. Oh, that's I was like, what the fuck? I was like, who paid them to do this, bro? <laughs> I was like, who paid you that? That was a moment that like, I've never had nothing like that happen to me before. Mm -hmm. And that kind of made all the all the fuckery of handing out flyers and all that shit. That made it worth it, innit? Like, so but yeah, it's always good. And um That's yeah, lit, man. That's lit. Mm. Wow. Yo, it's proper, it's proper nice. See, I'm just trying to be like you, man. I'm trying to be like you lot, man. No, man. You got all <laughs> going out, ends of that, everyone's no, hanging out. I'm going to try, I'm going to try. Getting caught in areas you're going to have been to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. set like that up. <laughs> for real, for real. No, That's man. lit, man. It's humbling, man, honestly. It's humbling. It makes you just want to work harder. Yeah. Honestly. I hear that, man. Like, fans and that. That's sick. How, how big are you trying to like blow China? Just big think, as I can. Is, is the UK enough? No. Is, you know, international baby. Worldwide? Okay, okay. Nah, you know what? In all, in all seriousness, though, when I see people like Stormzy or Bugsy Malone or Skepta mm -hmm. or um, Chip, Captain Cock, like, I think I. Or even tight, like, yo, when. The UK is cool, but. The world's a big place, isn't it? Obviously, I'm not going to be everyone's cup of tea, but I want to... I can't impact the, like, people if I'm just in the end. So, I'm reading... It's a book called A Key Guy. It's about um, a little island off Japan, and they've got the highest population of centurions in the world. Um, centurions as in people that live to be a hundred and above um, and they're all in one island and no one can figure out what source they got and no one else ain't got hey, oh, oh, no. No. oh my goodness wait <laughs> apologies um, again yo you don't know you know <laughs> Are you um, sure that has some other beer in your tea? Like, <laughs> <laughs> nice population centurions in the world, and um, they figured out that it's a combination of the food that they eat, um, how much movement that they have, the activities that they do, and um, their relationships with people. So they eat like a very well-rounded, like natural diet. Um, they don't sit in an office every day. They actually move and do shit, and um, they have good relationships with people. And that's what they found to actually be some of the things that 
have enabled them to live as long as they live. And the book just pretty much compresses all of the information in, in a one little book. So that's dope. Um, the Laws of Human Nature is not to be blasphemous, but that's like my Bible right now. That like it teaches you about. So verbally, what we're all doing now, we're communicating. So that's like the first level communication. But um, the laws of human nature teaches you about um, second level communication. So it teaches you about people's body language. Um, um, oh, I thought paranoid now. You like, that's what I'm like, my body language. No, so cool. I've been seeing, I've been watching your feet. Ooh. Everyone thinks that you're super analytical when you read shit like that, but it's not even that deep. It's like, but it's teach you, it does teach you a lot about how and why people do what exactly, they do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the laws of human nature is something that I'm almost finished with. And um, what else did my read? I wrote a, I wrote a, I wrote a book. I read a book on that healing by Stephen McNutt. I forgot what the name's called. Okay. But um, it's a dope book and it teaches you how to heal, I guess. And mm -hmm. um, what mentally, physically, emotionally, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, they're like the books that I've started. I've got like a whole collection, but yeah, they're like the main books that I've done. And besides therapy and coaching, I listen to like high frequency music, so it's music, it sounds but at a particular frequency, and this frequency is supposed to be good for you. Listen to like before the shows, I listen to. So every morning I wake up, I listen to high frequency music, and mm -hmm. then before all my shows, I listen to that like, choir music. Like, that a lot? I thought someone was gonna jump. I was like, Shit. <laughs> it's like what water does for your body. Mm. So in the, in a the, like, that's the oh, best way I can explain it. Okay. So it's music at a particular frequency that gives your like you can listen to. Can we listen to some now? Yeah, just type in um, four, four, three, two, H Z. Back it up, back it up, but won't lie. Tell a man. I've got that like, three shows coming up, but I forgot all the dates. <laughs> when is your fashion show? Yeah, July. July. So I've got two shows. So your fashion show and another show in July. Um, I'm supposed to have a show on Sunday, and one show next month. So. Is it busy? They know who they are. Huh? Anywhere I am, they know I'm representing. Cheers. All winter, all winter, all fucking winter. They know who they are, man. But yeah, shout out everyone. And I hope you're having a lovely evening. I'm sure everyone is. Because I know what you lot get up to. Avlon, Avlon, Trey, Trey, Avlon. Yeah. You're barking up the wrong trees, so what lasts on me? No, I'm dressed in all white whenever I see free.